Hi, I'm Anne Marie Mahoney, Chair of the Capital Budget Committee. This is certainly a unique way to present to you the FY21 capital budget. I hope you find this information clear and informative. For this session of town meeting, our annual capital budget committee report is only five pages. We chose to focus on our recommendations for FY21. In the fall, we will send out our full report when we have a clearer picture of our chapter 90 state roads money, where our five-year projections are going, as well as updates on our building projects and CPA requests. Before we get started, let me share with you one piece of good news, and that is that the DPW renovation and addition is complete and it looks great. We look forward to inviting you to an open house as soon as we can safely be together in the DPW space. Next slide. I am sure you have seen those wonderful hope signs all over town. Thanks to Dante Mazzioli and friends for reminding us that hope can get us through these very challenging times. Hope is important because it can make the present moment less difficult to bear. If we believe that tomorrow will be better, we can bear a hardship today. With this sentiment, I wish to gratefully acknowledge all the efforts of the town's administration, Patrice Garvin, all the department heads, and elected and appointed officials who have worked to create the budget that we will present to you on June 16th. We have all had to make sacrifices to come out on the other side of this pandemic and the concurrent budget crisis intact. My comments on the FY21 capital budget are made in the spirit of informing you of the gravity of the cuts we have had to make to our budget. It is our role to defend the capital budget before you. Next slide. As always, we have a wonderful capital budget committee representing various areas of the town government. Pat Bruch, Susan Burgess Cox, Adam Dash, Jenny Fallon, Carl Haglin, and Becky Vos. Next slide. We started our budget season in late fall with this funding information. Our discretionary funds were tight, in fact, $300,000 less than last year, but it was workable. At that juncture, uh, I'm sorry, at this juncture, let, re let me remind you that every year a capital budget asks for an additional $3 million in funding to truly meet the essential capital needs of the town. Even the Collins Center report stressed that capital should be funded at five to 6% of the town's budget. We are currently at 3% before we even started this year. And so as you can see, our initial funding was 1.4 for discretionary requests, 1.7 in roads money from two overrides, water and sewer enterprise funds at 1.2, and the sidewalk override money for $225,000 our initial funding being at 4 million point seven. We were not sure and we still aren't of what the chapter 90 roads money would be, but at that juncture we were anticipating 400, I'm sorry, $540,000 from them. As of late fall and early winter, our focus was purely on the discretionary funds. Why? The roads and sidewalks money was guaranteed by the overrides, water and sewer enterprise funds pay for some of the DPW vehicles and equipment used by both water and highway. All in all, we were good, we were pretty happy, but by early spring, as we all know, the bottom fell out of everything and our assumptions were no longer valid. Next. What were the requests? Let's focus on the discretionary funds. The total request from department heads was over $2.1 million. Again, roads, sidewalks, water, sewer, still at a fixed level. So we're focusing on discretionary funds, requests being $800,000 more than we had to spend. In light of the tight predictions for FY21, the, these requests had already been pared down before we even saw the department heads list. Next. In addition to limiting requests uh, of the Capital Budget Committee, departments were asked to remove capital items from within their operating budgets. This meant that vital equipment that is routinely purchased every year 
will not be purchased this year. And this includes, next slide, uh, fire department turnout gear, EMT and fire suppression equipment, police patrol cruisers, office supplies and equipment, DPW park cemetery and central fleet equipment, facilities equipment, and library computers. Warning, these reductions of capital in the operating budget will be extremely difficult to make up without doubling the funding next year. Every item you kick down the road eventually has to be funded and at a higher cost. Next slide. As the financial effects of the pandemic continue to unfold, Patrice joined us at our April 16th meeting and requested even more cuts. Let me emphasize two things at this juncture. First, the Capital Budget Committee wants to be team players. We recognize that we are all in this together and we wanted to work to avoid cuts in personnel and vital town programs. However, as the advocates for capital, which as we know is never sexy and never exciting, we must remind you of how vital capital is to the operation of the town. Patrice requested that we uh, eliminate all of our roads money for 2000 and for FY21. That is $1.76 million. And that, that money go to the operating budget to try to close the uh, proposed gap in funding. Also, she asked us to reduce our discretionary funds by $525,000. This was a huge and very painful request. Many of you will remember how difficult passing an override for roads was and how we promised the town when the 2001 override passed that we would guard that money with our lives and we have. We were finally able to guarantee a predictable stream of money to address the terrible condition of our roads. We have made sure that the $1 million override grew by two and a half percent each year and that that pot was totally dedicated to roads. In 2015, with that override, we added another 300,000 as well as the 200,000 for sidewalk repair, all of which grew by 2.5% each year. Losing 525,000 in the discretionary funds is just as painful since we never have enough money to meet department needs as it is. A long, intense discussion ensued before the Capital Budget Committee very reluctantly voted five in favor of the cuts, one opposed and one absent. So what you see before you is the elimination of all of the roads money, 1.76, a reduction in discretionary funds by more than half a million dollars, leaving us with about $951,000 in our discretionary budget to work with. Additionally, there were some cuts from water and sewer enterprise uh, and those are, were agreed upon at the time, so I'm not going to focus on those at all. Next slide. What does this mean? And I wanna put it in this context. If the capital budget is 3% of the town's total budget, which is where we started, then if the operating deficit is $5 million, capital has turned over 46% of that. If the operating deficit grows to $6 million, capital has turned over 38% to make up that operating deficit. That is a huge hit on the capital. Uh, next slide. Okay, what items that we had previously considered and were ready to support did we then have to cut in our discretionary budget? The Chenery Cafeteria, air conditioning compressors have failed. They are 23 years old. They will not be replaced. We were planning to do to create secure vestibules in two of the elementary schools. We wanted to replace at least some of the Butler windows in order to mitigate extreme heat in the classrooms as well as to create energy efficiency. This is part of our ongoing building envelope project we've been doing for years and to which we usually dedicate $200,000 a year. In addition, we had requests for school paint and carpet replacement in two of the elementaries, fire department portable radios, various department vehicles, and DPW vehicles and equipment replacements. None of that can happen. Next slide. 
what are we recommending? Let's look at the positive side here. In public safety, as you'll recall, every year we set aside a pot of money dedicated to the replacement of the ambulance and the cardiac monitor on the ambulance. After five years, we've accrued enough money, we buy the new vehicles and we start all over again. So this is our annual set aside. In the school department, $30,000 towards a network firewall. This is replacing two existing townwide core firewall appliances. In the health department, we are going to buy out a van lease for an electric vehicle. And on the DPW, we've all agreed that we are leaving the sidewalk money intact. Next slide, please. For the facilities department, which is chronically underfunded, they too have a, an electric van that we are buying out the lease. In place of replacing Butler windows, we are going to invest $10,000 in a kind of heat mitigation film to put over them to at least make some impact on the heat level in those classrooms. We are adding $50,000 towards, uh, in addition to $45,000 that we allocated last year to completely replace the Winbrook PA system, which is the components have failed. We are purchasing radio systems, an upgrade here for the four elementary schools. These are portable radios to facilitate emergency contacts in all four of the elementary schools. Last two items I'd like to explain more fully. The police station building project, as you know, is still in place and, and we hope to finish up by the end of the year. It's going really, really well. We're very pleased. We had anticipated requesting $250,000 in furnishings from the Capital Budget Committee to furnish that building. As things unfolded, we decided, we, the building committee decided it was unfair to make that large of a request from Capital Budget. So we reduced our request to $135,000 and we have gone out seeking the balance of funds from other sources. We have already received a $100,000 grant from the Belmont Savings Bank Foundation and we are eternally grateful for that. Finally, the biggest ticket item we have here is the replacement of the underground gasoline tanks at the DPW. These tanks are overdue to be replaced. We've been talking about them for at least four years. They have to be replaced. And by the new code, they have to be above ground tanks. This becomes even more urgent because we have eliminated the gasoline tank and pump at the police station. And so the police vehicles will be gassing up at the DPW in addition to the other town vehicles. So $540,000 is a big hit, but it is very, very necessary. Next slide. Uh, a quickie here on water and sewer enterprise funds. We will be continuing our stormwater, uh, um, what is it, pipes and underground stuff that we examine and replace, $600,000. And then using the funds, we are replacing those three uh, vehicles that you see before you. Next slide. That's a lot to take in. At this juncture, I would really like to thank those people that we work very closely with. In particular, this year, John Marshall, who completely reorganized all our materials in a really great way. It was very helpful. Glenn Castro, who is always there with our balance sheets and handouts. A special thank you to Matt Haskell, who always keeps us posted and in the right place, whether in person or cyberspace. And to Pam Callahan for being his very helpful backup. And finally, thank you to all of the department heads who did either did not request items or who gave up, up critical capital equipment in their ongoing programs in order to help balance the operating budget. We thank them for their cooperation. Next. What does the future hold for us? I have a saying I use with my bereavement groups. And as we face an uncertain future, we are in fact in a time of both grief and loss. And so I think this fits. Life isn't about waiting for the storm to pass. It's about learning to dance in the rain. And so all I ask is that we make sure we share our umbrellas. Finally, on the next slide, I have posted my email address. If you have any questions or need any clarification, please contact me and I will give you an answer right away. And I can hopefully address your concerns in my brief overview live at town meeting. Thank you so much 
for absorbing all of this material.